Welcome, Zoo Crew people. Um, part three in the ever continuing quest to make it so that anyone can pick up the zoo deck and just start playing it uh, after reading the zoo thread or watching the zoo videos. I've come and I've found today's been a good day. I've gotten gotten a couple different good videos uh, recorded in. Um, as always, this is going to be just me reviewing what happened, uh, sort of in a play-by-play, -play, um, watching the game over again, uh, rather than a live game uh, due to time constraints. This is the deck that we're running here. And the deck that I played against today was a control deck, a blue-white control deck. Now, blue-white control decks are a little bit different. Sometimes they have uh, different... Um, sometimes they have different uh, ways they roll. Uh, they all sort of play the same, though. It's Their end game is different. Their very beginning game is all about board control and control as to what can be cast or not with counter spells. Um, it's a little bit different than than, uh, than like, um, for example, uh, Grixis or Esper or even um, or even, uh, what do you call it, the the uh, Jaskai control deck, which is red. Um, because it has a better mana base, so you can't really... It, common cards that you usually take to hate it out are stuff like Magnus of the Moon or Blood Moon. You can't really do that with this version. Um, it's a little bit softer. Actually, it's a lot a bit softer to aggro, but it does have main deck um, removal, not just one-for-one -one removal spells, but like wipe removal spells. That's something to keep in mind that if you recognize that you're playing against a blue-white control deck, uh, that you're going to not want to overextend at any point in time of the game. Um, furthermore, as far as the uh, the control deck goes, what they do to end the game is is generally different. Sometimes they're using Geist of St. Traff to end the game. Sometimes they're using things like Vendillion Click to end the game. Sometimes it's Restoration, um, what's commonly called Restoration Control, where they're using uh, Resto Angel to flicker effects like uh, flicker kitchen things or whatnot. And, and that's a form of control as well. And... Um, Sometimes they do that to, to do it. It's often it's often considered to be like a more mid rangey strategy for that ladder one or Geist, but it's basically the idea is just to control the game up to a certain point, and then after that, allow um, whatever bomb you're choosing or whatever sort of engine you're choosing to win the game to win you the game. Um, this one specifically that we we ended up playing against was a Sun Titan control. Uh, which uses things like Amiria and um, different, different sort of like uh, flicker effects with uh, Wall of Omens to try to control out the game. Um, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to the game in question. Um, yes. So I open up a pretty good hand here. I'm going second. I open up a pretty good hand here, not Wild Noctil, although I draw that. And I see that I've got a Voice of Resurgence and a uh, Tarmogoyf. So bolts, uh, two lands, which is enough for me, and um, Wild Noctel that I drew. The Wild Noctel was a great draw. That means I can go Wild Noctel into Voice or into Tarmogoyf, depending on how it goes. Seeing that he's blue at this point with Flood Strand, I'm pretty happy that I've got this uh, Voice of Resurgence. Voice of Resurgence is super good against that kind of deck. Um, so we're going to put our Wild Noctel out there and see what happens with it. Um, he ends up not doing anything. He ends up going to um, Jace. Now, Jace is one of the newer cards that come out, but it's actually pretty good in a control deck. Uh, it flips pretty much guaranteed as long as you don't kill it. Um, but it is, it is, you know, it's, it's two mana Planeswalker, so it's very susceptible to dying. Just like Gideon is susceptible to dying. Baby Gideon. Uh, I have to consider here whether I want to bolt the Jace or whether I want to put out the Voice of Resurgence. Um, my my thoughts here is that Jace isn't going to flip. Uh, for some reason, and I'm going to admit that I was wrong here, I thought it was 10, not 5. 5 is very quick to flip in, in this kind of a deck. So I end up just going for the voice. In retrospect, probably should have just bolted it. Um, but I, I opt for the voice instead. Because I, I, I know I want to... And the idea here is putting out a voice allows me to now counterspell... Like, uh, if he plays any counter spells, then I can go ahead and, and, and um, play around it. If he's playing removal on my turn, which is wrong with the voice, then I can play around things like that. Um, this means that basically my Tarmogoyf is going to come in safely. It's 
at least my thought processy. My th my Tarmogoyf wife is gonna come in safely. At this point, I reread it and I find out that it's you know five, not not um, not not you know uh, ten like I thought it was. So uh, you know I'm gonna go ahead and just start. I was like, all right, I gotta get this off the field. So I start. I decide to bolt it instead. But the good thing about it is still, if he counters it then I'm going to go ahead and, and still get around it. He ends up path to exiling it, because I think he realizes after he cracks that, that if he counters it, I'm just going to get a token. So to correct his sort of mistake that he made, he path to exiles this, um, which is going to prevent me from getting a second, uh, you know, copy of, of this uh, elemental token. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to put me up in land. It's actually going to allow me to do collect the company and, like, uh, Night of the Royal Quarry and whatnot, so I'm gonna go for it. Um, I didn't realize though that this is in fact gonna let him flip it because when he remains, I'm gonna be able to um, bolt it. And I, 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 again, this is where me failing to recognize meaning that I could bolt it. So what I should have waited for is him to use his ability and then bolted it in response to that. Um, that's my fault. But and I could have saved myself a card. But I do recognize that I have to kill this Jace before it can flash back a ton of spells. Like if it flashbacks Path to Exile a couple times, I'm screwed. Um, so it's fine. He ends up uh, wiping, which kind of stinks. But that's one of the good reasons uh, to run things like Voice of Resurgence. Because even during a wipe, you end up at least with one creature. And when you start refilling the board, it's fine. So that's fine here. I'm going to go ahead and bolt and kill that Jace. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and main phase. I opt to main phase it here because I very much doubt he's got a second mm -hmm. Supreme Verdict. It's only game one. Uh, they generally only run three Supreme Verdicts mm -hmm. main deck, so I doubted he had it in hand. He could have had it in hand. Um, but I didn't want to let him have a chance to pop, pull out a remand on me or, or mana leak. I'd rather just get my creatures out there and refuel. Um, well, that's my reasoning for doing what I do. And I put out a Scavenger News and a uh, Wild Noctel because those were the only things that I really got. He ends up untapping and just wiping the board again. But hey, man, at least I got through two board wipes. Um, and then I go ahead and I cast my, my Knight and my, my Tarmogoyf. Notice that I'm not really overextending. Yes, the Collected Company allowing him to main phase uh, wipe my board again is sort of a little bit of a definition of overextending but the difference here is I, I gave my reasoning for it so I, I didn't think he had another supreme verdict it was me just sort of gauging and against the the blue white deck you need to realize when you have the the win and you're allowed to overextend or when you shouldn't again this is a perfect example right here of of what me gauging whether or not I have the oak stand. Looking at what he has, thinking he's probably got Snapcast or ways to flash things back. He's got like Sun Titans in his deck that I can now see. He's got Path to Exiles. I don't want to overextend here. So what I end up doing is I'm going to go ahead and not attack with my Knight. I recognize very early on that I'm going to need to do some massive damage to him, and he's going to try to one-for-one one removal me with things like a uh, remand or mana leak. Mm -hmm. And so anything I top deck off my library needs to be, have the ability to kill him. And there's a way for me to do that, which is called Kessick Wolfron. Um, and it's in the deck. So I'm not going to attack with my knight. Mm, four extra damage that may get pathed is going to burn me. So I figured what would be the safest route, and the safest route would be either to get a um, man land or to get a um, Keswick Wolfron. I opt to get the Keswick Wolfron because I feel like I'm going to need to do more massive more damage, and I'm probably going to draw some more threats, so I don't need to necessarily get the man land, which still dies to Path to Exile. The only thing it doesn't die to is Supreme Verdict, but he's already burned two probably out of three of those Supreme Verdicts. So it's better for me to draw probably just to go get the Kessick Wolfron. In the end, he did have the Path to Exile, so I did make the right choice. If he pathed my knight at, when it was attacking, then I would have been screwed. He also, I also made the right choice there, by the way, to not uh, get the knight. Because I could have also sacked my um, land during the attack phase, got my Kessick Wolfron, and then pumped a bunch into uh, Tarmogoyf, but then I would have been blown out by the Tarmogoyf. This at least gets me the four damage here. Um, so I opt to go get the the um, land, which is fantastic when you got a Kessick Wolfron out there. Any land I draw at this point is actually live. Um, I've got... I recognize that he might have removal, but he's not going to do the removal unless I... Um, 
I until the end of turn anyways, right? So, and I don't want to just get board wiped. I don't want to untap and lose the game. So what I end up doing is I'll wait to see if there's any removal here. If he decides to burn his removal on my Tarmogoyf, cool. Then I'm going to, then that's fine. I, I can cast, the, the cool thing is I can cast Luxon on Smite or whatever I want. The thing that I was really thinking is he's, you know, if he's not got a path to exile and didn't path both my Tarmogoyf and my, my Knight, then the fair chance is that he doesn't have the removal that he needs or he's sitting on, he's sitting on a, uh, another wipe and he's waiting for me to, to two for one me with a wipe and I won't do that I'm just not going to overextend at this point I have the win on the board it's called any creature plus this this Keswick wolf run so all I'm going to do is just push as much damage as I can in and if he decides to burn me with some removal that's fine next turn I'll just play my 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 smiter and just continue to do that I, I have a better game than him because his deck is filled with a lot of like counter spells and that's actually probably what he's sitting on from what I'm evaluating so we'll test that theory and we'll pump four into there. And when he takes the damage and there's nothing else, he doesn't have removal in hand. He's only got um, he's only got counter spells. So I'm just gonna be able to very easily win this. I'm gonna go ahead and just attack straight in with this Tarmogoyf. Uh, he's gonna Ojai command here, um, and then counter spell my path because I don't want to. I don't just watch. Don't want to deal with this this creature here. Um, and quickly doing the math here, I knew that I was going to get him down to one if I pumped everything into my trample. So I'm not going to do that. It's just It would be easier for me to go ahead and say, yes, I'll pay for this mana leak. That'll get rid of this. And then I'll only deal four damage instead of um, getting him down to one. Uh, if I drew a bolt, it would be shittier. But I've already got two bolts in my graveyard, so the chances of me drawing a bolt are pretty slim. Not to mention, if I put down even like uh, a, a Noctel. He, I'm gonna have force him to have to have removal. Um, he's only he's at zero cards in hand now. So the the chances of me just being able to just swing next turn with my Tarmogoyf rather than bring him down to one by tapping all out is pretty high. So it's yeah. I, I just take a little bit of thought to what should I do here. I can also trample over if I really want to. Um, but you know what? I don't need to give my Tarmogoyf Trample for no stupid reason. Um, he ends up drawing a, a Spreading Seas, which is like, oh, that's cute. He has Spreading Seas in his deck. I didn't realize that. And that turns off my Keswick Wolf run. Um, but the damage is already done. He's going to Serum Visions here, and then he's going to find nothing, so he's going to go ahead and concede the game. Uh, and what I meant, by the way, is I said it's going to suck if there's a Bolt. I actually didn't mean to. Uh, he's still at 3 life, so... <laughs> If I drew a bolt, he's still dead. If this changes nothing. Just it, all it did was give me options to maybe cast uh, my wild Noctel or cast my my smiter if I if I needed to. But eh, I might as well hold on to him if he's got like uh, some kind of removal. I didn't want. I really didn't want to draw a. Uh, a realistically, if he had a path, and I still had the game, if I attacked with my Noctel, if he had just a mass wipes board I just would cast my Noctil and give him an extra draw step yeah it's just fine um but yeah no it's it's uh, what that really was trying to be is an example as to um uh an example as to why you want to make sure that um that you don't want to overextend it at any point in time with the uh with the what do you call it against the control deck like especially the blue-white one. With anything that's got main deck wipes, you potentially set yourself up for three for ones, four for ones. Sometimes you got to be careful about it. Here, I even I even set myself into a wipe, but I'm I'm at least I know what I'm doing with it, so I can kind of I can kind of mitigate the damage. Um, I opt to Thalia is more important to me than any of the other cards to put out currently. Currently, that is, uh, and I opt to put Thalia out there. Like, kind of right away if I can. If it gets remanded, that's fine. I can still go ahead and put the Noble Hierarch. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, because I was thinking about this, whether I should hold the Noble Hierarch to refuel later or not, I opt to put the Noble Hierarch out, because that'll allow me to, with an extra land, put out my Knight and my Tarmogoyf, while still having a Knight and a Thalia in my hand. So I'm not super overextending. I'm soft to two wipes, but not to one wipe. Um... This also means that if I draw a collected company, I could do that at end of turn. I could also float the mana and wait for the wipe, and then go ahead and and, and collect the company afterwards. Um, I could also theoretically put the Thalia out there and 
stop a wipe for a turn. It gave me options to put this Noble Hierarch out there. And if he decides to wipe my my thing, instead of going to 5 mana, I drop back to 3 mana. But 3 mana with uh, a couple cards in my hand rather than the full grip is still very doable. I'm not, I don't have to spew everything out, you know? And at that point, I'd be, be worried about things in general. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to put that Thalia again out there. My main reason for trying to put that Thalia was... Um, and he knew that he had the Thalia was there, too. So, uh, it wasn't like if I decided to cast a Tarmogoyf, he would have just let the Tarmogoyf resolve, and then against the Thalia, if he had a board wipe in hand, he would just counter the, the Thalia again, so it's not like that big of a deal. Uh, I opt to put out a Knight instead of the, um, Tarmogoyf. The Tarmogoyf is going to be 4-5 if he board wipes, uh, which is still pretty good. Anything, you know, above 4 with Tarmogoyf is premium. Um, but the other flip end is if I untap with this knight, I can get that wolf run again, or or even uh, stirring wildwood to deal with things, and that's fantastic. Um, he ends up doing the wipe, which is fine. I draw another land here, so I'm actually fine on lands. Uh, the the noble hierarchs did their job, which was to speed me out. He ends up, I, I he ends up pathing me. I'm kind of like upset about it. I was like I should have cast that coif because I knew the um the thing's gonna the the knight would have done more damage um so here's let's look at where i am in this situation i've already been supreme verdict once had a bunch of cards remanded and mana leaked and then um path to exiled one of one of my knights uh so i've already burned through a lot of creatures but the difference here was even though i was extending i wouldn't say overextending, i was extending on those turns it was a careful extension. I understood that, all right, I'm going to put out just... I knew what my, my creatures could do and how quickly they could end the game and what the pacing would be for them. And instead of going, yeah, let me go ahead and try to end this game as fast as possible, which is a common mistake a lot of ZP players will do, I said, okay, I know if I put these couple creatures out, I will end the game. And if they he deals with them, that's fine. I will replace those couple creatures, and I know those will end the game. And if he deals with those, then... You know, I'm going to be on top deck mode, but the difference between me being on top deck mode, being the aggro deck, and Zoo is a better top decker than most things are because we top deck things like Knight of the Relquory and, and Tarmogoyf, which are power cards, um, is he might top deck mana leaks. You know, it's very, very possible that a control deck might top deck the cor perfectly correct cards that they need to top deck in order to to win the game and take it down. They also might top deck the perfectly wrong half of their deck that won't do anything. And I'm very much sure that after I hit in with this Tarmogoyf and he does nothing about it, he's got counterspells in his hands clogging it. And I don't need to feed those counterspells by, by putting creatures down there and watching them get countered. I can wait until there's removal and he taps out a little bit more and then puts down some creatures. Uh, and that'll survive a barrage of things. Also, likewise, if he's got like I don't know, four Ojitai commands or four cryptic commands. I can that'll that'll burn some time. I can use the Tarmogoyfs to get rid of those things. But aside from that, you can only cast what to it at most ever. Um and that's pretty much one at most, but but uh, late game two at most. Um so that's what I'm I'm trying to evaluate here. When I go and I swing with my Tarmogoyf and he does nothing to it in a second. I'm like, all right, cool. He's just got counter spells in his hand. He's not going to be able to survive out through this. And I, or he's drawing an extra land. Now, bear in mind, some control decks have upwards to 28 lands. That's almost the th half of their deck, because they have to hit those land drops in order to be just you know go over the top with their things. Um, that's that's a soft spot for them. Is when we're both in top deck modes and they're top decking lands, and I am not top decking. I'm top decking gas. Um, I'm in a better spot than them. Uh, I see this scavenge news, and I recognize already because I saw that he's got Emiria out there, um, which is a recursion engine for late in the game, one of the win cons of uh, playing the blue-white control deck if you choose to go that route. So I know he, I already saw Sun Titan. I know he's got things he can do. So I could put the scavenge news out and just start eating his uh, graveyard, but I'd rather see my Tarmogoyf get killed first before I put the, the scavenging news out there so that my scavenging news stays a threat and I'm not overextending. I've got to be careful of what I've got going on in my hand at this point. Um, we go through and I attack. Again, I'm hitting in. I, so I'm like, all right, he's got counter spells. I draw a Tarmogoyf. I know I have gas here. I opt to um, attack here. And if it hits, there's a very good chance that I'm just going to go ahead and cast another Tarmogoyf out here and then be like, all right, wipe, wipe the board if you want to not die. Um... And then if he does wipe the board, follow it up with the scavenger news, eat all my stuff that I've done, just swing and kill him. Uh, I've also got a bolt, 
which is worth mentioning, you know, that's like closing game stuff. I think it was like, I left one bolt in the deck and that was the bolt. And he hasn't done anything yet. Alright, so at this point I draw the third, third creature. And drawing a third creature here, I recognize that he's got three cards in his hand. Yes, they might be counterspells. But I have three creatures in my hands, plus something that stops Sun Titan, plus a bolt that'll end the game quicker. I'm going to hit him with this. Regardless of whether he removes it or not, I'm going to add an extra creature to the board at this point. Probably a um, spider, because I know that can't be can't countered. I'd wait for him to tap before I put the other two out there. Um, and I hit, and he goes down to three, and I'm like, cool, he's got a bolt. I've got the I've got the win here. He doesn't even he doesn't even wait for the bolt. He just concedes. Uh, I think I conceded maybe a little bit too quickly. Um, but he actually, no, he actually showed me his hand after, after this, and he showed, it was like, it was, I think, a remand, a mana leak, and, um, and two lands. And that's, so yeah, he just drew the, he just drew the wrong things. Uh, but that happens to control decks, man. It's, it's one of the reasons why, and people will, will say, like, oh, you let's sack the right top deck, because you're an aggro deck. One of the plus sides of playing an aggro deck is the fact that you have just built-in redundancies. Your deck is just redundant as hell. Um, and as such, you don't die to those kinds of variants. Sometimes you draw one land all game. Sometimes you might land Flood, but it, it's few and far in between when you lose to those things as Zoo. Uh, I mean, that's sort of how it rolls when a third of your deck is utility spells, a third of your deck is uh, creatures, and a third of your deck is lands. You know, it's just you got a one out of three chance to draw any of those things. Anyways, that is the control deck. Now, I'm going to go ahead and also pull out some um some some of my again this is not all the zoo collections in the world in case anyone's wondering it's not like these are all like these are all the zoo card options there are other options i don't have a, uh, i don't have in here um but these are a lot of most of the options you can you can choose from uh sort by convert mana cost that's how i always sort things Against control decks, what are good against them? Uh, Horizon Canopy is always good because you can at least find an answer a little bit. Stirring Wildwood, um, Raging Ravine, um, Treetop Village. These things aren't immune to removal, like all removal. They can still get hit by Path to Exile. They can still get bolted, stuff like that. Um, they can still get terminated, whatever. Well, not terminated, but, well, actually, yeah, they can get terminated, can't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah they can. <laughs> um, excuse me. They, so you still have ways to lose with those guys, but the plus side allows you to not die to board wipes with them. So if someone wipes your board, you can still beat down if you're sort of on top deck mode and you draw crap. Um, as far as lands, those those are pretty much what's good. You can also occasionally use a Sinjiri step if you're using Knight of the Relquery, uh to avoid like a bolt. <laughs> doesn't like do anything more than that, but it can avoid a bolt for you. Um, moving on. Let's evaluate some other stuff that we can do here, uh, depending on what the deck is. Depending on what the deck is, they might be using some kind of graveyard shenanigans to kill you with great with control. Control is a very, very broad term, but in, in modern, there's really only Grixis control currently. Again, it's, it's August 2015. Uh, there's really only Grixis control, Jaskai somewhat, even though it's not super good, uh, and blue-white control, which is also not super good. Um, so, yeah, with those, that's that's something to keep in mind. Break the elements if it's a Jaskai control, red pyroclasms, mm -hmm. you might want to avoid it. Mm -hmm. uh, Path to Exile is a card that I actually keep in against the control decks. Mm -hmm. um, it kills most of the things that the control deck puts out against you. I actually side out lightning bolts very, very, very often because mm -hmm. lightning bolts are pretty useless. Uh, to, to real quick go over what I sided in against them, I didn't side very much at all against this deck. I took... Some Thalias, and I think I sided in some Dramacus commands as well because I, I actually, I mean, did I, did I side in that? I, this is what I, I, I would side in, but there, I think what I actually sided in, I left in one bolt, so I only sided in three things. Yeah, I didn't even side in the Dramacus command. Uh, in retrospect, I'd side in the Dramacus command now that I know that he's got, um, that he's got some, some enchantments that I would have to kill. But um, aside from that. Uh, I just cited in Thalia as an eclectic company. But I'll go back on to what we've got here. Um, sometimes it pays to bring in things like Spell Pierce. 
Um, and you would bring in a spell pierce specifically if there's a ton of board spell board wipe spells, and you are a uh, you know blue version of zoo, or the aquarium, or your um, domain zoo. Other things that you can bring in, I know a lot of people like Grim Lavamancer against a control deck because it's a, it's reach. I actually don't like Grim Lavamancer against a control deck. You have reasonings to bring it in, you know, because it's like it's repeatable damage output, but it just dies to everything that, that they play, so I don't think it's that good. I mean, I, I don't see the difference between bringing in a, a Grim Lavamancer and bringing in a Goblin Guide. Goblin probably, probably hits for more damage. So, like, Bring in a, I wouldn't bring in a Grim Lava Mancer against them, but people have been known to do it. Occasionally, you might bring in a Rending Volley or a Combust, depending on, on what their win con is. This doesn't kill Sun Titan, but it does kill things like um, Restoration Angel. It does kill things like... Um, uh, it does kill stuff like, uh, like, like, like their um, Colonnades. Uh, again, you'd have to evaluate what their win con is. That's why if you're un being controlled, at least play long enough to find out what they're going to kill you with before you uh, concede the game. Let's see what else we've got here. Uh, don't don't bring in Nature's or Autumn's Veil. It's a bad card. I just have it because I like making people angry. Uh, <laughs> um, Finds of Vastoid is a great card to bring in. Uh, very, very often control decks will take three damage to try to bolt your early creature uh, and to kill it so that way they don't have to deal with it and they can get towards the late game and you vines a vast with it after that they are suddenly down to 11 life or 10 life it's insane it's you've actually been like yeah turn two you're at half your life and they they are not going to be able to race you at that point you will just kill them no matter what you draw um let's see what else there is occasionally i've brought in topper orb against things like um restoration control mm -hmm. restoration angel ventilian clicks snapcaster those are the kinds of uh, kitchen finks those are the kinds of creatures it's playing uh it's not the best thing in the world against anything oh well, it's actually awful against everything else uh but that is an option against them uh if they're playing that form of uh control thalia is and always will be very awesome against control it just makes all their deck go from being efficient to just shitty um i wouldn't even bring in negates or um unified wills in against them it's just it costs so much that you're not you're not uh, it's stopping maybe like a board wipe but it's not stopping really anything else um what else is there let's check To do, to do, to do, to do. Um, at all on the Great Revel, it'll either do two damage to them, or basically anytime they counter something, anytime you play something and they they can't get around it, and it sticks for a little bit. Yeah, it's gonna hurt them a ton. Just just by them just playing game will hurt hurt them. Uh, let's see what else we've got in against them. Let's see, let's see, let's see. This will stop board wipes. Get up tag. It's not so great other than board wipes. Uh, it's pretty good if they have like if their win con is something like a uh, batter skull. Um, but yes, it stops board wipes. Yes, it stops a um, couple other cards that are relevant. But the real thing is it um, stops dig through time and treasure cruise. Those things are banned in modern now, but if they ever get unbanned, just for future, in case I need to update this video, uh, Gadok Tag is good for them. It was good in Legacy because it stopped um, Force of Will, because Force of Will costs five. Uh, Tarkus Command is really good just because it ends the game very, very, very quickly with them. You could maybe Deflecting Palm if you wanted to, if they have like some kind of gigantic thing that they cast. There's some control decks that even Polymorph. You were talking bottom tier here but um but you know you can deflecting palm something like that um let's see here what else you got kosali pride mage and artifact removal in general is or artifact removal and enchantment removal depending on what they do sometimes if it's blue moon uh they might take uh, uh it might be like a blood moon deck it might also have things like um threads of disloyalty ghostly prison or um or Vidalkin shackles that would be the time to bring in things like uh the the commonly you know pride major things like that um 
assuming silence, whatever. Um, Voice of Resurgence, is, as you guys saw, was just really good because it just forces them to double up removal, and that kind of stinks for them. Depending on what kind of um, deck they are, you might have a option to bring in a sword or two, also depending on what kind of deck you are. Um, even Mind Sensor, if they're a greedy deck, you can bring them in to sort of land screw them. Uh, likewise, on the land screw, you can also bring in things like Blood Moon or Magnus of the Moon, uh, depending on how good their deck is against that. The one that I was playing was not super great. Um, but there's also uh, Molten Rain that you could bring in against those kinds of decks. Uh, aside from that, Choke is really, really good. If I played more control, I'd probably have Choke as one of my top options I'd bring in, because it's also good against things like Twin and whatnot. Um, uh, I've brought in Looming Shaman against like Grixis Control, because they use the graveyard a lot. Geist of St. Traft is really good, because they have no good way to remove it, aside from trying to like ambush Viper with a uh, Snapcaster Mage. Um, Domri Raid will win you the control matchup, just in general. If you cast it and it lives, just because it's such inevitability, you plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, you eventually you're drawing more cards than they drew. Uh, you're, so what's crazy is the control deck, which thrives on on uh, card card advantage, you're beating them in card advantage. And then it's the minute you negative seven it, it doesn't matter if you have no cards on your board. Uh, within two turns, you'll win the game. That's just that's that's my what I've learned over time. It's just no matter what, eventually you'll win the game. Kitchen Finks, I wouldn't side it in, but I wouldn't take it out of your deck if you had it. It doesn't die very easily. It's actually persisting like the persist mechanic's supposed to be doing, not not you know like crazy combos that it was never supposed to do. Uh, but yes, uh, Kitchen Finks is just a, a pretty good card to have against them. Of course, Smiter is your overall killer control card. It's very good against tempo. It's very good against control. Those, that's just, that's the reason why it exists. Uh, normally you wouldn't sell me on a 4-4 four, four for 3, but uh, I, I will be sold on a 4-4 four, four for 3. That is pretty much screws control over. Uh, zipping right along, I'm trying to think if there's anything else really in the 4 drops that you need to worry about. Uh, Siege Rhino, they, unless they have a way to deal with it, kind of sucks. Any sort of um, Planeswalker, uh, Elspeth, which I don't actually have here, but a Johnny, you stick a Planeswalker around, they're, they're going to be very, it's going to be bad for them to live through. Uh, Thrund is also going to be really good, because when you play Thrund, it's basically just saying, like, yeah, fuck you, Control, you can't do anything about it. There's literally nothing Control can do about it. Nothing. You have to be tapped out and then get a board wipe, and that's the only out they have against Thrun. Um, Tasker nowadays, but... So again, like I said, yeah, anything, any kind of planeswalker. You start playing planeswalkers, you'll you'll pretty much serve. You'll pretty much never die uh, against them. So that's uh, control in a nutshell. I know I went over a bit more of control for this half of the thing, um, but I felt like yeah, you guys might want to know about it. Anywho, remember, guys, keep feeding those animals. Thanks. <laughs>